eyebrows. What the hell was that? It was nothing. Artifacts do unspeakable things to people. I realized that someone already shares my insane life. Stop! I don't know any age that gets happened. I don't tell about age children. Life is a pain. Yeah! Or he's your journal boy and I'm the one who eats all this stuff. and also a member of the Television Critics Association. And it is my pleasure to be moderating the uh, Warehouse 13 panel this afternoon. Uh, anybody watch the show? Uh, anybody see the season finale just before? Uh, I've been a fan of Warehouse 13 from the very beginning when we got to uh, visit Pete and Micah and Claudia. Uh, the first few scenes were shot at the ROM in the old entrance. So, uh, it, uh, it's been great to follow the journey with them, and then later Jinxie came along. Um, oh, a few Jinxie uh, fans. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. I was told backstage uh, before I bring them out, um, Aaron and Eddie are uh, both going to be signing after this. They're going to be near uh, Carl Urban and Ron Perlman and George Takai, and Eddie said he's giving out free hugs, uh, kisses, kisses and gropes you have to pay for. <laughs> He didn't say. I hope I get a cut rate because I'm moderating the panel. So let's uh, let's bring them out. Uh, we got Eddie McClintock as Agent Pete Latimer. <laughs> the lovely Miss Allison. has been your home for the last five seasons, correct? Correct. That's right. Yeah. Eddie, Eddie, I'm going to start with you. What's it been like shooting this show in Toronto, in and around Toronto? Um, I, you know, uh, chorus. That's all I can say. <laughs> I mean, I'm so addicted to chorus pancakes. It's, I, I, I went in there yesterday and it was like I had to say goodbye to my best friend because I was like, yeah, this is my last time, chorus. Throw an extra pancake on the grill. <laughs> And, uh, I mean, it's been great. It's been great. Uh, our, our crew here is, uh, arguably has been one of the, one of the greatest group of people that I've, that I've ever had the pleasure to, to spend time with and, uh, love Canada. And it's interesting, um, I was here two years ago 
And literally, uh, Aaron had bought pictures, bought some pictures of the two of us for Warehouse 13, and people were coming up to him uh, out, out in the signing room, and they're going, now you're from Smallville, right? <laughs> and, and Aaron and I are sitting right next to each other, and he's like, yeah, yeah, but I'm on this show, Warehouse 13, and we're like, well, tell we me love Smallville. <laughs> tell, tell me all about that. What is that? <laughs> Poor Eddie was getting no love that day. This, this is more like it, right? This Eddie? Is awesome. So thank you guys for showing up. Uh, Eddie, now is it? It's true that you is it? You've been uh, misidentified as Craig Sheffer, Is that right? Uh, I uh, Craig Sheffer and David Boreanaz. Done. So, so I mean. I used to get, uh, well first I got uh, uh, Craig Sheffer a lot. Now Craig Sheffer was in a movie called A River Runs Through It. And um, when <laughs> my sister went to see this, uh, the movie, uh, River Runs Through It, she called me and she was like crying. She's like, oh my god, this guy Craig Sheffer looks just like you. And I got so, she was in Florida, I don't see her much. You'll learn that we McClintocks cry a lot. If you've seen the, um, if you've seen the uh, Comic Con uh, panel, I was weeping like a child, so I may weep today. So get, get ready. Anyway, so Craig Sheffer, I looked like Craig Sheffer, and then um, then all of a sudden David Boreanaz came on the scene, and then everybody thought I was David Boreanaz because I was just you know trying to trying to get jobs in L.A. as an actor, and, and, and I was on Bones. Yes, thank you. But um, so so one day. I in an audition, this guy comes up, he's like, hey, chef, what's going on? He's like, oh, wow, man, I thought you were Craig Sheffer. And I go, what? Because everybody thinks I'm Craig Sheffer. And he's like, well, he's here. He's like, I'm going to go get him. So he goes and gets him, and he brings him back. He's like, hey, Craig, look at this guy. He looks just like you. And Craig's like, oh, my God, you're so handsome. <laughs> You know, everybody says, I, I look like you. And he's like, yeah, man. And he goes, I go, do you know who we look like? He goes, who? I go, I, we look like David Boreanaz. <laughs> and he's like, we do, we do look like David Boreanaz. And then a year later, I went and did uh, Bones, and I'm standing on the set, and I'm looking at David, and he looks over and he goes, oh, wow. <laughs> you, you know who you look like? And I, and I go, yeah. And he goes, hey, you look just like Craig Sheff. <laughs> That story, the funniest part about that story for us is that we've heard it so many times, we can mouth along. That's right. So I'm, I'm predictable. But, uh, but yes, so longest answer to your short question. Yes, David Boyer. I've actually signed autographs as David. I got a free pizza once. They're like, oh, hey, we love Buffy so much. We brought you a pizza. And I'm like, cool. There you go, baby. Pizza. I feel as though if you guys weren't already shooting the, the final episode, it would have been cool to have the three of you guys all on together playing maybe evil twins of each other or something like that. Oh, yeah, that would be, but, that would be amazing. So you guys did the final table re read for the final episode a couple of days ago, and then, Aaron, are you guys in the middle of shooting the episode now? Yes, we are. Yeah. And, and how's that going? It's... And how does it all end? like a bitch every day. <laughs> They're having to constantly redo my makeup, and you know, getting teary and snotty. But uh, it's good. It's 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 bittersweet. You know, uh, I think it's sad to, to be sort of in the final thing, but we, we we knew it was coming, and the final episodes are have been amazing. Uh, the la this last one in particular is really really good. But the hardest thing I think, uh, and I was you know I've been kind of talking about this is. We shoot a scene, say in Lena's B and B or Artie's office now, and then it's gone. They're starting to take stuff apart because that's just the way it is. So it's yeah, it's just really tough to, to know and you're trying to like soak in all these memories and take mental pictures of everything because you know that it's gonna be gone and, and uh, so you know, leaving these characters and, and leaving this family that we you know, as Eddie said, the crew is is awesome and a blast to work with and you know, these other actors and stuff, it's really tough, it's really kind of hard. So it's fun, the stuff that we're doing, the, the work is amazing, there's some really incredible stuff in this last episode, but it's bittersweet because we know it's coming to an end. Allison, have you stolen anything from the set yet? Um, I'm taking home Sylvia Plath's typewriter for my new apartment. <laughs> and my heart. <laughs> she stole my heart. Um, at Comic-Con, I found out that, that Aaron and I were going to beef over who 
takes home the metronome. And my argument was, Aaron, I play guitar, I'll use it. And I'm like, what are you gonna do with a metronome? Keep and myself alive. And <laughs> I decided to bequeath the metronome. Very, to very graciously oh, go on. allowed me to, to take that home. Well, because there was conversations about maybe... Um, Sisterhood of the Traveling Metronome. <laughs> yeah. Share it. You know, okay, you can have it on weekends and all that, you know, that kind of thing, but I appreciate it. If you ever want to borrow it... It's all right. If I come down to LA for pilot season, I'll bring it and... Okay. She can sit on your mantle for a couple months. Yeah. Is that weird? <laughs> He meant as if she's really nice. Alice would come and sit on his mantle. Put my feet over the edge. That's right. Sing songs. What are we doing today? Guys, <laughs> talking about you know, uh, you know, knowing that this is the end. I mean, the network announced ahead of time that this was going to be the final season. So, any for you guys, for you in particular, is it good knowing that you guys, you know, it's not as if the network has decided after a season finale, okay, that's it, and that was the series finale. Is it good? Do you think that's good, or, or is it bad knowing that the end was going to be coming and that you're working towards it? I mean, for me, um, you know, we we were all kind of waiting and waiting to find out what was going to happen, and and. Um, you know, for a minute there, we, we thought that maybe we were just done. And so the fact that, um, you know, the, the network executives at Sci-Fi fought for us and, and got us these last show, six shows so that we could properly end um, the series. And uh, I think that, that they paid a lot of respect to, to us and uh, it's a great show of confidence by the network. So for me, it's better to, to have been, um, you know, told beforehand and at least, you know, given a chance to end the show the way it should, yeah. you know, it, it, because it's for the fans. I mean, you know, the, the, the fans would have felt terribly ripped off if we had just been canceled, I think. I feel the same way about it, and that's what's so satisfying about um, this last six episodes is going into it knowing that, that it was going to be our final arc. We're going to give you everything you want. <laughs> on steroids. It's like I'll pull, pulled out all the stops and, and uh, the, uh, the thing that, that Saul said at Comic-Con that I, I keep um, reusing is what happens in the very end to, to all of us, to, to Pete and Micah and myself and Jinxie is unexpected but inevitable. And you get to see my nipples again. But that's all about nipples. <laughs> nipples are in. Oh my god. Oh, I just, think you just don't make a fart joke. <laughs> Nipples are the new cod piece. <laughs> All day. All day. You know, I think too, like on a for like on a selfish note too, for for Yeah, yeah, yeah me, I'm gonna say that selfish. Um, for us too, if if it had just been we'd shot it and then it was done, we wouldn't have got a chance to to say goodbye to the characters too, and I think that's important because Especially you guys have been with the characters for five years. That's a long time. It's a big part of who you are, and, and you know, to, to not really get a proper chance to say goodbye to the characters, just be like, okay, you're done. Uh, so that's selfish, but it's also really nice that we get a chance to do that and say goodbye. Like again, I live in Toronto. You guys, everywhere, everybody lives differently. If we just kind of finished that and that was it, no chance to sort of say goodbye and really appreciate that this is this is the the, the last time. And my accountant time. was thrilled. <laughs> You're getting more? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait to take the, the, the grace right out of it. <laughs> Eddie, let's talk a little bit about um, about the character of Pete. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the guy that we all love to hang around with. The so non sequiturs, the kind of boneheaded <laughs> comments. Aaron is in a rare form. We're going to talk today. about my, my favorite subject me. <laughs> You're on a timer. <laughs> um, but but there's been some really tender moments, especially between Pete and Micah this season with the with the whole cancer revelation. Spoiler alert. Um, what's it been like playing this character that you know at times is is kind of you know the guy that you want to have at the party, but he's got this emotional stuff, and we've seen this emotional connection between these two characters, particularly this season. Right. Well, um, I mean the the brilliance of 
of the peak character for me, and it's really a testament to Jack Kenny, who is our, our exec uh, producer and our, our compass. I mean, I, I don't know why he's not here right now. He should be sitting here because he he's is, way more interesting than he all of us. Way more, I mean, everybody comes and he's like, and people are like, you're so funny, and I'm like, it's not me. Okay, I'm just a meat puppet. I used to, Jack writes the words and I, I spit them out, you know? But um, the thing about Pete for me is when you get, a lot of times as an actor, when you get on a show, you get, you're either on a procedural where you're going, oh, I think he's dead. Is he dead? He's dead. Bag him up and send him to the morgue, you know? And, it, and there's. That was the worst David Caruso I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm gonna hug you afterwards, but I just like, I thought, yeah, I wondered why you didn't come to the uh, the rap party last night. You jilted me. I love you. That's okay. <laughs> I knew I was gonna see you today. Uh, so, but the thing about, thank you. So, I'm having a funny feeling. Um, Don't fight the tingle. <laughs> Uh, I mean, come on, every, I mean, when you guys watch the show here, is it, is every commercial break, uh, Cialis? <laughs> a lot of Cialis commercials? It's funny, because I've talked to people, and like, I was talking to this guy, and he's like, well, what's up with all the Cialis commercials? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't know. He goes, well, you know, the, let me just tell you, the guys that watch Warehouse 13 don't have trouble getting boners, they have trouble getting chicks. <laughs> But you know, you gotta explain to, you gotta explain to your child that's watching the show, what, what is erectile dysfunction, man? What is that? Well, oh, son, you get to be my age. Uh, so back to Pete. <laughs> I think that said most of it right there. That's, that's what you need to know about, uh, that was Pete talking about Pete's character. Yes. Uh, it's, the thing about Pete is he gets to be all these things. He gets to be brave and honest and, and tender, and at the same time he gets to be silly and and you know I mean so it, it shows a full person for me you know and and uh, it, it I think it gives hope to guys that are either overly serious that it's okay to be silly sometimes and maybe for guys that tend to be too silly <laughs> and I'm not I'm not naming any names. Uh, that, that it's okay to be, you know, um, a man sometimes, too, so. Uh, Allison and Aaron, let's get whimper you. Too. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> oh, and Allison and Aaron, what about you guys? I mean, the relationship between Claudia and Jinxie, I mean, a, a deep, deep relationship without the chance of them ever getting together sexually. So what's it been like playing those two characters and working with that relationship? Incredibly frustrating. <laughs> Not just I'm just kidding. Links shivers, you know that's not how, like, you know, gay, gay besties work, right? Um, you preach, girl. I think mm -hmm. Jinxie goes both ways, doesn't he? No. Come on. No. Mm. Oh. I mean, <laughs> so much for my mental pictures. I'm leaving. I mean, for me, as soon as, as, as Aaron walked on the set, I gotta, you know, give it to him for being so tolerant of the sort of uh, cyclone that I was, just coming at him being like, okay, so here's how it's gonna be. Um, I, I'm just gonna treat you like I treat all my gay besties, so I'm gonna speak to you in Ebonics and snap at you a lot, and you're just gonna have to go with it. And Aaron was just like, okay. <laughs> And, and I'm new here, so <laughs> tell me how it's going to be. I mean, this has been the most fun um, ride and relationship to develop because, I mean, I, I think we're so, so similar um, in the way that we come to work, and so we laugh a lot together and still get the job done. Yeah, and I, I was very nervous sort of coming in to the show to work with all you guys because a well-established show, hit show for, uh, for sci-fi, and, and you know, you jump in and, and you don't know if people are going to like you, you don't know if you're going to get along with people. And I think, luckily, 
you know, I don't know how these things happen, but chemistry happens. And I think that you guys all had it on the show, and that's what I was worried about not maybe fitting in, or, you know, just those things that happen. Um, and right. both of you guys, I, mean, I worked with Eddie the first episode, and then with Allison, we kind of paired off and did a lot of stuff together. And you guys were both incredibly sort of, uh, like, open to, to whatever I was going to do and, and cool with that. And both of you guys, super... Like, you work with some actors and they're just kind of there, they, you know, they don't really care about you or what you're going to do or whatever. And I think both of you guys were super open to, um, you know, what, who I was going to be and you, you kind of brought me into the fold. And that's nice because a lot of actors, not that they're bad people or whatever, but they just, they're not as open to that sort of thing. And you guys, like, embraced me and I appreciate that because if not, I think I would have been... I don't know, I, I probably would have sunk, so I appreciate you guys. Well, I remember um, that you were a little nervous and concerned about the uh, leather and feathers photo shoot that we did. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was just glad that I could, you know, walk you through that. Okay, okay, if we're gonna do this. Okay, so <laughs> that was fun. There was only you and me, so that was a little weird. But I have to admit, I thought that was a little weird. But the first, one of the first scenes I did with Eddie, uh, it was a big sort of, what? <laughs> sorry about this, Allison, it's just, this is what happens. Uh, it was like a big sort of walk and talk, like a lot of exposition, like when he did his Caruso sort of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Eddie was like, came up to me and he was just really nervous. And he's like, oh man, I don't know, man. I've got the, I got the fear. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I got the fear. And I was like, bro, this is your show. <laughs> I'm new here. I can't be talking you down. You're supposed to be talking me down. And I was like, hey man, it's gonna be okay. You've done 26 episodes already. I think you, I think you got it. You know, it's gonna be okay. But he had the fear, and uh, yeah, I was having fear. And uh, because we, for some reason, we showed up, and Jack was like, where have you been? We've been waiting for you for 25 minutes. Now get in there and act right now. And then, so it started off a little, and I was having panic attacks. Yeah, he was having panic attack. I had to hug him. Is. I didn't know. You know how you can tell when know. Eddie has the fear is by the smell. He also <laughs> he also farts when he's happy. <laughs> when he's sad. When he's feeling cantankerous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I crop dusted uh, Aaron the first time. He, uh, we were shooting a scene at the uh, the at the bronzer, bronzer. <laughs> and they had us the bron. There's a we're all standing in front of the bronzer, and I kind of backed up into it there because I knew he was getting ready to go in. <laughs> and then, uh, the door closed, and Eddie was smiling, and I thought, "What the hell is he smiling?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> smiling. <laughs> Welcome to Warehouse 13, baby. That's what you get, sucker. But I, but I remember you standing there, uh, and I was, you know, I go, oh, hey, by the way, man, I'm glad that you came on the show. And he's like, oh, thank you, Eddie, thank you. And I go, yeah, man, I, I opened up the Hollywood Reporter, and I was like, how do we get the guy from Exeter? <laughs> And then I, uh, I read further and I was like, oh. <laughs> said, you're okay too. Hey dude, welcome aboard, kid. He was like, oh, that's sweet. <laughs> so ever since then, it's right. been kismet. So we've just learned how the bronzer actually works. Is that right? <laughs> People actually come out bronzed after the crop dusting. <laughs> Um, speaking of the, the of jinx of being gay, I understand, uh, Aaron, that... That to do with farting and Eddie. That was a weird thing. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep on a schedule here. Um, can you talk about... Apparently there's, a, there's an episode coming up where we explore Jinxie's flamboyant gay side. Can you tease yeah. a little bit? Mm. Uh, I, think was, I think I was happy uh, to, to do this episode, but I really think that it was, uh, was Allison's... <laughs> It was more for Allison because she had way, way more fun than I did. I can confirm that. Yeah, basically, there's an artifact that uh, is splitting people into two 
sides of themselves, uh, an incredibly studious, serious version, and a flamboyantly, no, actually, no, sorry, and a party version. So we may see an incredibly party version of Steve, uh, which was really fun to play because, um, because Allison had so much fun with it. I think, I think Allison's basically been waiting for like three years to, to get a chance to really Dass Round Honey. So yeah, it, it was a lot of fun and I have Jack help you snap it out. Yes, Jack our, our, our showrunner. Yeah, I had two consultants on how to play this role appropriately. Um, and yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. I have no idea how it's going to turn out because it was a whirlwind playing two characters. Well, I was watching and okay. it was glorious. Yeah! So, I am definitely very interested in seeing how it turns out. Speaking of, can I just say they showed last night they at the uh, rap party they showed the the jinxy death scene man and it always gets me. I mean the scream from Allison. I mean and, and, I mean just so and you saying get back to the car. Uh, get back. I was so gonna say tense. I asked Jack if, if I could say get back to the chopper. <laughs> Is there a lawsuit pending? You need to get out of this. Is there a lawsuit? Sorry about that. I'm not giving any ideas. Thank you. Yeah! What a That's so sweet. I love that. Did you paint that? You're so talented. Don't hide. Be proud. Hide it under a bushel. No, you don't have to be You should show everybody. Yeah. Side Allison, so we can have a little bit. What? What? No way! You have to keep this in your house. <laughs> really good stuff. Really good stuff. Seriously, you want me to keep this? That's so sweet. I will. So, just before we kind of get start closing up, we only have a few minutes left. Uh, what? Shouldn't we do some questions? We talked a lot about Cialis. What can we say? <laughs> so, Allison, I wanted to get you to talk a little bit about uh, the whirlwind that has been Claudia's life, yeah. uh, particularly in this last season. So let's go through this. So Jinxie was dead, then he wasn't. Right. She was bronze, then she wasn't. Sure. She thought her sister was dead, but she's alive and she's evil. I remember, yeah. She didn't want to be a care the caretaker, but now she does want to be the caretaker. I don't know. I do, but I don't. I don't know. She's fascinating. And now she's going to kick some serious ass, it yeah. looks like. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, can, I honestly couldn't be more satisfied with the entire arc of Claudia. Um, because, you know, I got this gig when I was 18 years old, and it's been four years. I, you know, this was my, Toronto was my college town, these were my college years. I feel like I really kind of grew up and, and learned a lot from, from this show, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'll go, I'll get specific, I guess, with, um, with, with Claire, um, Claudia's long-lost sister, the storyline that um, you guys will see next year. I think it was really important um, this year for Claudia to learn, as an adult, there are just some things that you can't fix. She's had the warehouse on her side when it comes to rescuing her brother, when it comes to bringing Steve back, and, uh, and I mean, we've proven that when Claudia decides to go on a mission, she, she's like a, you know, freight train. Say it every way. That's right. Um, and, and, uh, and we also wanted to explore what it was like if we couldn't reverse the downside of an artifact. If, if an artifact affected someone, and there was no way to neutralize it. And so that, without giving any more away, that's what's wrong with Claire Donovan, um, and, and why she's been in a coma for 15 years instead of in Claudia's life. And, uh, and of course, because Artie knew and didn't tell Claudia, that's affected their relationship and only, only deepens the sort of 
tenuous father-daughter, sorcerer and apprentice um, <laughs> relationship that we share. And, and as an aside, these two have been crying like bitches every day. <laughs> I have been feeling just really uh, enjoying every every day and just having a lot of fun. But then I look at Saul, and I start to get choked up because uh, I I like to think that when I joined the show, um, I kind of got I got two new dads, or more accurately, a cranky Jewish dad and a fabulous gay uncle of Jack. <laughs> So, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't be happier with, with where Claudia's going. And in terms of uh, the whole caretaker destiny, you know, I'm, I, I can't see everybody, but I'm sure there are a lot of um, young women my age in the audience who have, you know, look at, at, at what they're doing or, and the future and feel really overwhelmed. I'm like, I, do I want this? Do I want that? I don't know. I feel it every day, just as a, as a, a performer and as a, just a young person in the world. Um, and so I get to, to bring that very real, very true, sort of life crisis to Claudia when it comes to, um, you know, deciding whether she wants to be a bit of a Dorian Gray in, in, in the Mrs. Frederick role, but I think it's, it's really satisfying where it goes. You know, I, I think um, season one, episode four is when Claudia was introduced, and I remember when I saw the cut, and uh, I just thought, oh wow, um, this show might be okay. <laughs> because, I mean, Allison uh, just brought so much to it, you know, and, uh, and, and it became, it, it went from being a little silly to like, all of a sudden, like she brought so much, you know, gravitas, if I, if I may say so. So the fact that here we are five years later and the way that the series is going to and uh, it seems right to me, you know. Um, it, it's okay for me to go, you know, the warehouse belongs to, to Claudia. And that's, that's cool. I think it's a, a brilliant way to go because Allison's done such a great job. Shut up. It's true. <laughs> So, don't get me started. <laughs> so the show final season starts airing in 2014 on Showcase. Would you guys be open to a TV movie or a Kickstarter campaign for a feature film? Yes, I am. Yes. Veronica Mars did it. Love that Kickstarter money. Right? I mean, this is the era of, of crowdsourcing, right? I mean, if, 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 you, if you build it, they will come. Or rather, if you guys build it, we'll show up. <laughs> and then, just as a, as a final thing, I'm just going to go through, I'll start with you, Aaron, and then go through and finish with Eddie. Final thoughts on the show, and what do you want to say to the fans that are here right now? This is where Eddie cries. This is where Eddie cries. Let me start. Um, yeah, for me, and again, I haven't been here from the start. It's been three years, it's been three wonderful years. Uh, there's a lot of amazing things about this show. Um, the relationships with you guys, uh, creating characters in that too. I mean, not just you guys as people, but you know, working with you guys as these characters. I've never really been on a show where I've enjoyed the characters so much. So that's a thing too that I think is really unique um, that I'm really, really gonna miss. And just to sit here on a stage on a Sunday afternoon in August and see all you guys come out it, it just means a lot because we make this show, we do this show, and we know that people are watching it, but when you come out and you get to, well, I can't really look you guys in the eyes because it's pretty bright, but I'm trying to. But just to sit here and hang out and chit chat and, and feel the support, again, I, I've never really felt that, and it's amazing, and thank you for supporting us, and, and I really, really, really hope that you guys enjoy the last six episodes because we had a great time making them, and I think we've all poured ourselves into them and please enjoy and and uh, love you guys. You know, you guys are the reason we got a fifth season, right? I mean, it's true. Eureka was not so lucky. They they got one uh, episode to wrap it up. 
which was just not enough for anybody, for the, for the cast, for the fans. And, uh, and based on your loyalty and, and involvement and excitement about the show, we get to say goodbye to each other and give this to you. And that's a beautiful thing. And then on a, on a really personal um, note, uh, every time I sort of have, you know, self-doubts or feel feel conflicted, just like Claudia feels conflicted, um, it's uh, Claudia Cosplayers and, and uh, moms on Twitter who write to me and say that their nine-year-old daughter wants to be Claudia instead of Miley Cyrus that makes me feel so great. smart and express yourself and not conform to some, I don't know, big commercial ideal of beauty and, and uh, appeal. And, uh, and, and it's an honor to me. So thank you so much. Well, um, for me, before Warehouse 13, I had done nine pilots. Um, I guest starred on probably 50 or more shows. Um, I've had four network series, and they all went away, you know. And uh, when Warehouse 13 came, and you guys embraced uh, the show, and you embraced the character of Pete, um, it, it's, you don't know, it's such an incredible compliment to be given. And, um, I thank you all for, that's why I love coming to conventions, man, because I love meeting and talking to you all because you've given me um, an opportunity to be a good father, a, a good husband. I mean, I, I know those are my responsibilities too, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, honey, it's the fans! <laughs> the, reasons I, the reason I'm an a-hole is because of them! <laughs> but, uh... Um, I love the fact that you've supported us and me, and thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I, I know that I'm speaking for all of us from the bottom of our hearts, and, and, and I hope that you will uh, um, speak fondly of us when we, uh, when we uh, s sail off into the sunset. So thank you all so much. Guys, it's, for me, it's been personally a pleasure to watch the show over the past uh, few seasons. It's been great seeing all these characters grow up. And uh, Eddie, I can't wait to see you in Sharknado 2. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. I'm Greg David from TVGuy.ca. Uh, check out Aaron and Eddie. They're going to be signing stuff. Uh, I'm out there. I just I don't know if I'm with you guys or if I'm at a different table. Whatever. I'll be there. I'm out there too. Yeah.